Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Gina T. Natale here, and we are continuing our readings in Psalm. We're up to Psalm 18. <clears throat> it's been quite a journey from Psalm 1 to Psalm 18 with David, and me bringing this message to you, being led to read Psalms. Um, there's so many wonderful messages in Psalm about strength and renewal and protection and grace and mercy and God's faithfulness. It's just, it just boils down to God's faithfulness that he is always there for us. And it just, like I said, that thread, we are not alone. He's always there. David is an example time and time and time again um, of God being there when David needs him and David being knowing using his faith in God because he is a man after God's own heart knowing that God is there for him even if he doesn't answer him there are times when he just broke out in praise and worship it started off as a he was in despair and Four minutes later, he was rejoicing and thanking God for his goodness and his wonderfulness and his provision, his grace, his mercy, his protection, his wisdom, his direction. And we all need that. Who doesn't need all those things and that much more? And God Almighty, who created us, has all of that for us. Um, and Psalm 18 is quite fitting for such a time as this. Um, yesterday I made a little post. It was a crazy week. Um, there was so many irons in the fire, so to say. Um, my sister-in-law wasn't feeling well. Oh, I just got shocked. Oh, I just got shocked. Um, I just got shocked in my hip. So that's why my thing must be streaming slow. Um, yes. So a lot of irons in the fire. My brother was busy working with his boss, Chad after many years working together, six or seven, I believe, and getting things ready to get out of there by yesterday. My sister-in-law fell ill and unfortunately it was her birthday. She was having some tummy trouble. And I made a post about faith and endurance because it was just a lot of very top being very tired and, you know, not having much left in you. And it has been the hottest week of the, of the, year so far in here in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, the heat indices of 110, mamma mia. So tonight, oh, it's like, what is it? 1014 in Grandview, Missouri right now. And uh, we're supposed to get a break by nine. The alert is over. Um, you need strength and endurance for 110 degrees. Um, huh. And uh, so the next week is just going to be in the mid eighties all week and lower humidity. So go figure. Um, so they got all that done. My brother's boss, Chad is almost with his family up in West coast. My sister-in-law looks great today. Um, some of the tummy trouble she was having is over. Thank God. Hallelujah. And strength and endurance really was needed yesterday. I think for a lot of people everywhere and God's strength, and endurance, he is strong when we are weak. Like I posted Exodus 15 two. it was quite beautiful yesterday. Um, after I posted that video, um, I went down to the gift shop and wouldn't you know, they had little angels, female angels, all different nationalities and color. And they had little scriptures on the front and it said, Exodus 15, 2, God's, when we are weak, God is our strength. And I thought, oh, what a message. What a beautiful, beautiful gift. And, um, you know, we've been through a lot this year. Last, excuse me, last year we've been through a lot with the an, uh, pandemic and just life changing and closing, everything closing down. We weren't able to be physically social with our loved ones and friends and inequalities and strife and meanness and just a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be justified. And it will. God is the God of justice. And still now we're still battling this COVID. These new strains keep popping up. 
Do you get the vaccine? Do we not get the vaccine? Bring it to God. Bring it to the throne. Ask him what you should do. What do you feel best for you and your family? That's what you have to do. What, what you feel in your heart is best for you and your loved ones. And strength and endurance. Um, you know, there's so much we can do. There's so far we can go in our own flesh. And it gets tiresome and it gets weary. And he can give us that extra push, that, that his strength. He will give us his strength and endurance to continue on. Um, uh, I can't remember the scripture, but I believe it's in Isaiah 44. Um, we will ride on eagle's wings. God will renew our strength. We will rise up and not grow weary. We will walk and not faint. That's our God. That's God. And it's, it just leads right into Psalm 18. Um, and it is long, so I'm not going to read the whole Psalm. I encourage you to hopefully research Psalm 18 on your own. There's 50 lines. Some of the Psalms David wrote are very, very long, but if you realize what he's sharing with God and, and praising and worshiping God from what he came out of, why he wrote the Psalm, whether it be a song or a lament or just a letter or just speaking to God, Psalm 18 is a Psalm, is a song, pardon me. And surprisingly enough, he is singing the song to God. Um, He's singing the song to the Lord because it, it, on the day the Lord rescued David from all his enemies and King Saul. And as we've talked about, King Saul was the first king of Israel and appointed by God. And unfortunately, Saul decided to not impart with God or fellowship with God anymore how he wanted to take care of Israel. And Saul decided to go on his own way and he became angry and bitter and not kind to the people he was taking care of, which is God's holy people. And he was doing bad things, which displeased God greatly. And David was chosen because he is a man after God's own heart and was a faithful boy, just a shepherd boy. And um, oh, my eyes burning. Um, and he loved, he loved God. And like we've talked about so far up until 17, Psalm 17, just like we read in Psalm 17, David was just beside himself as to why he was being chased by Saul's army. Like, not that he was proclaiming his own self-righteousness, but that he was sharing with God that he walked in the way God wanted him to. He talked in the way God was pleased with. He didn't understand why Saul was so relentless and David just kept going deeper and deeper into the wilderness. Um, and God knew that because like I said, God knew why Saul was after David. It wasn't any fault of David's. It was because he was going to be the next king and King Saul was envious and angry and wanted him dead, even though it was a son-in-law also because he married Saul's daughter right before Saul, David took off into the wilderness because he found out that Saul wanted to kill him. And he was jealous because the people adored him. He killed Goliath at 15 years old with a stone and a slingshot. Um, he was a, a likable man, a man after God's own heart, a faithful man. And, you know, more people started to look to him than to Saul even before he was anointed king. So clearly Saul wasn't having that. So anyway, in those days, he went out and took his army, but David was protected by God every step of the way, no matter what. Um, no man can thwart the plans that God has made. And strength and endurance. So when we begin, I'm gonna read part of the beginning. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to fill in part of the middle and then just close and I do hope that you read it, but the, if you read the, the the beginning, it's it's we've read it before in other psalms, Psalm one through seventeen. And thank you. We'll just thank God for this message, and hopefully you'll get something out of it, and know that you are not alone, and God is our stronghold and our endurance and our rock, 
and our refuge. And he'll give us strength when we don't think, when we have no strength left in ourselves. And his strength will get you through everything and anything. Um, it says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength and whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my mighty tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be patient. So praised. Who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevent, prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and I cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry be came before him even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled, the foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was, he was wroth, he was angry. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made the darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of sky. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed. Hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot out lightnings and discomforted them. Then the channels of water were seen and the foundations of the world were discovered at the rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. We're gonna stop at line 20. There's 50 lines. And I think that's just so perfectly fitting because when David says in the last line, according to the cleanness of my hands, David had two opportunities to kill, well, let's just say David could have killed Saul. Uh, when David was in the wilderness and Saul and his armies were um, pursuing David and the few men David had with him, at night when they went to sleep, David was just inches away behind a tree behind Saul and he could have took his life or he could have injured him but he would not do that because he looked at Saul, even though Saul turned away from God, he was still, he was anointed in the beginning and Saul wouldn't do that. And Saul didn't do that to, excuse me, David didn't do that to King Saul and he nor did he do that to his children. Um, and that was, there was another time, I believe in the mountain that David could have also killed Saul or took or hurt him. David would not do that. And that's where he means his hands were clean. Um, he had those opportunities, but he didn't take them. In the beginning of the Psalm 18, which is one of my favorite verses, um, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Um, strewn throughout the Bible, you will see that it says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer and my strength. And that's why I say how fitting this whole thread just keeps knit together. And it's just so beautiful. And I know the tapestry at the end of this 150 Psalms is just going to be the most beautiful thing. We see God's greatness, God's love, God's mercy, God's protection, God's healing, God's faithfulness. and it in turn makes us stronger, 
more faithful in God because his word does not return void. God is not a liar. God would never lie to you. God's word, what he says, if he says he's your rock, he's your rock. If he says you're, I'm your fortress, he is your fortress when you need shelter. He's going to deliver you. He gives you strength when we have no strength. All we have to do is ask. We have the choice for all of this. So I just want to give you other scriptures and I'll post the scriptures also in uh, 2 Samuel 23, 3. It states, he talks about my rock in Psalm 28, 1 talks about God being the rock, their rock. Isaiah 32, 2, it's, he is the great, he, he is our great rock. <clears throat> Psalm 62, 2, he, it also talks about the rock. The Lord is my rock. Psalm 19, 14, it says the Lord is my rock and my redeemer. Um, I could go on and on, but, um, it's all, it's like he's just solidifying over and over again that this is what, this is what I am for you. This is, you are my children of those that I love and created before the beginning of time. And I am your rock and I give you my strength and I give you my peace and I give you my joy, the fruits of the spirit again. Um, and here David is just singing to God how worthy he is to be praised and that he saved him from his enemies. So you had King Saul after him, you had um, his son after him, who actually took the army from King Saul, which was David's essentially, because he was supposed to be grown king, but ran into the wilderness. You had the Philistines, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, most likely. And who else were after, was after David? Um, because he was a righteous man because of God's righteousness. And he was a faithful man because of God's faithfulness. Um, and it just says how when David cried out for help, Time and time again, God heard him. And I and I know we said that if you're in a dark place and you need God, he will come down off his throne and he will, like it says, fly down upon the wings of the wind and come to your aid and comfort you. And I, I, I can't make this stuff up. I've read it time and time and time again. And I love reading it over and over and over again. It's, it's a new season. It's a new reason. You know, where every journey, every step we take in life is a, a, a step closer to in our journey. And hopefully we'll be walking in God's plan for us in that journey. Um, and he's there for you. He will come down, breathe fire, throw arrows and coals and lightning. And, you know, it says God is coming down. But then it also says the Lord thundered in heaven. Now, I didn't see that before I'm reading this. I read it before twice. Um, if he's already coming down on the wind, he flied, he, he did fly upon the wings of the wind, but the Lord also thundered in the heavens and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. To me, that's Jesus. And this is the old Testament. So when you know both of the books and you read the whole book, now, if he's, com if he's coming down on the wings of the wind, but yet the Lord thundered in the heavens, I'm, I'm speechless. Um, I will do more research in that. But to me, God and Jesus are sitting on the throne just as they were before they decided to create the earth and us. Um, and he did all this and drew him, drew David out of the deep waters. He was encamped by Saul for a long, long time. And Saul was just vengeful and angry. Um, and, but that was his own, he did it to himself, really. He chose, like I said, it's choice. He chose that. He chose to walk away from God's direction. And especially when you're dealing with the Israelites, because that is God's chosen city. Those are his holy people, the apples of his eye. 
we are to the apple of his eye, but Israel truly is the apple of his, that's his holy nation. You watch Israel and you'll understand when Jesus is coming back. Because I think, I believe for me, if Israel comes under some a great attack of, of great means, I, I believe Jesus, God, will be coming back pretty soon. That's my belief. The Bible tells us we don't know the day or the hour, but to be prepared. Just like we talked about the robe on the side of the bed. <laughs> um, you know, he tells you to leave a robe at your bedside in case that time does come that we'll be able to wrap ourselves up and not be embarrassed of our nakedness in the streets. Um, but the good thing is if God does come back, the first rapture, his chosen children will be coming home. He'll bring us all up. Um, and it just continues up to line 20, how he just rescued him. And uh, he brought me forth into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. And I'm going to leave it at 20. I'm going to keep this one short. And I have the scripture. God is our rock and our fortress. We'll continue with line 20 through maybe 30 or 40. Um, and it's finally, David delivered him from Saul's army and he eventually will go through becoming the king and be thrown king over just Judah because he let King Saul's son rule the other nations because again, he looked at King Saul's son as anointed and he would not kill him or take him out of his position. And that, and that's just, that's just character. And um, whatever it is you're going through tonight, a mess or you're in a dark cloud or a storm and you're in it, you're going in it, you're in it, or you're coming out of it, um, know that God is with you. And, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got a beep. I apologize. Know that God is with you. He's for you. He is your rock. He is your refuge. And um, you're not alone. Peace out. Be a blessing. We'll talk soon. Psalm, the rest of Psalm 18.